Good afternoon, Sean here from Mountains Garage, back with what should be the final installment of building a race Turbo 400. Uh, we left off with the front pump. It's time to do that. Uh, I think in this video I'm going to talk while I take it apart. There's a lot of things to cover. So I'll point the camera at it and we'll get after it. I believe this to be the pump that's actually out of the case we're using. A uh, couple things to look at. It's painted, so probably somebody's been into it. I'm going to start with taking off the gasket, if it'll come off. The seal. It seals it to the case. You can go either direction with it. Five bolts, hold the halves together. The gears, make sure you can still see me, yeah? Good, you can. Uh, these ears, are offset away from the torque converter and the dots face you. The next gear, the big one, isn't always marked. This one is dot down. A lot of times they dot up. Either way, we're going to put them back the way they, they came out. They were in really nice shape. You got to look everything over. They look almost new. I always wipe my hands. I don't let my tools be all slippery. Front seal. Sometimes it takes off across the bench. We need to access this bushing right here. And drive it out. That always gets replaced. Think of all the hours that engine's been idling. That empties my front cover. I need to get this cleaned and painted because it's going to hold me up. This half of the pump, you'll notice the bolts are different lengths. It's clearly obvious where they go. You want to check all your surfaces here. Make sure it looks good. Your bushings front and back. These seldom go bad, but easily replaced. This washer is your front thrust adjustment. Uh, I have an assortment. I'm running out of thick ones. Uh, when I actually put it in the case, I'll talk more about end play, but uh, in short, you need more in the front than you have in the back because everything is being forced backwards most of the time, but the gear set wants to come forward. So these are metal rings that actually lock together. Uh, our instructions say use Teflon. I prefer the Teflon. And that's what it's going to get, two seals. This is a spring we need to replace. It came in the trans brake valve body. So I'm going to clean this up. The horseshoe clip there. I can push that with my finger. It's not too bad. The new one will be a little stiffer, but if you hold this in the vise, push in on that, take a snap ring out. It's not a big deal. i got to clean everything, and we'll reassemble. That's just a round hunk of aluminum I set on top of the pump where the seal goes. So I can give it a paint job because yes, you know, neatness counts and so do looks. So I clean that first, get it drying while I work on the rest of the pump. That's the pile of pots that get replaced. This is a beautiful pump. I mean, I hate when you have to make a judgment call whether you should reuse something. Uh, a lot of times that is the case. This is beautiful. The two things we got to do to the back cover. Uh, one. We're going to change the pressure regulator spring that came in the kit that the instructions never mentioned. That goes in the back side of this cover. That's no big deal. Oop, there goes my finger. Two, that hole right there, let me see if I can actually point to it. This one, not that one, the one that goes in toward the stator. Because 
we're putting a bigger spring in the pressure regulator and up in the pressure in the transmission that only increases the converter charge pressure which in turn pushes on the thrust bearing on the crankshaft when trans brakes came out you know people used them off the starting line and then you know with turbos and stuff like that you're holding the trans brake on a lot longer hence the need for one an overflow can to catch any boiling fluid and two you got to restrict that charge pressure that's just hydraulically pushing on the back of the crankshaft so we're going to put a 5 16 18 tap goes right in that hole you don't tap it in very far we're actually going to put a 5 16 18 set screw grub screw whatever you guys call it over there in australia and then we're going to drill a hundred and ten thousandths hole in the now uh, if you have a brass set screw it works great and it's a lot easier to drill uh i only have a steel one today so I'm gonna go ahead and tap that, put it in there, and drill it in place, and then take it apart and clean it. But yeah, what a beautiful pump, and uh, I'll do all that stuff and get back at you. Oh yeah, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, the charge pressure I'm talking about is also, uh, if you pay attention to drag racing and racing automatics, you see all the uh, dump valves everybody's using now. They're actually taking the converter charge pressure, and instead of sending it out to the torque converter, the diverting it back to the pan does two things. It gives you the ability to rev the engine easier, uh, take the load off the engine. They can do, they can control it all the way down track if they want to for, di for different reasons. Like when it shifts, the RPM drop off, stuff like that. They can get rid of some pressure for a second, or less than a second, actually, it's milliseconds. Uh, also, it's taking that load off the engine thrust. Uh, like LS motors and stuff, the thrust is in the middle, it's not quite as robust as the small and big block Chevys and I'm sure other engines suffer from the same fate so it accomplishes two things that's all the rage lately in racing automatics is your dump valves and that's what they do they're dumping pressure and freeing up it's like the engines all of a sudden doesn't have to turn the torque converter takes that restriction away RPMs go up all right back to work if you pay attention to my videos sometimes you see a lot of old socks well they're, they're actually all clean you know, after the laundry's done, sometimes they get tossed out because they have holes in them. But in this case, I'm going to put it right over the stator right there so I can put it upside down in the vise and change that spring. So not only due to their shape do they sometimes come in handy, but you'll see them all around the bench. And it's not what you think, I promise. It's just, they're nice and clean. All right, I'll tap my hole. There's no drilling required. Just tap in a little ways. And try the set screw because you can go too deep really easy. Uh, I've drilled my last steel set screw. I promise you that I will buy brass ones from now on. That's a lot of work. Things hard. Uh, you have to take the stuff out anyway to clean the debris from drilling because that hole we didn't drill is right on top of the pressure regulator here. So. Take it out, clean it off, swap the spring. The spring is not very mean, so it's not hard to do. And now I'm gonna reassemble this. I'm gonna put one drop of Loctite on my grub screw, bottom it out, it's not going anywhere. And now I fix my converter charge pressure and change my pressure regulator spring. Final installation of the set screw needs to be below the surface of the two halves. Otherwise it would interfere. Now I hold it. In the vise with my dirty sock here, I use my a screwdriver against my chest or an extension, and I carefully load everything in. I hold it sideways because without a load on it, there's a pin that holds the end cap. And if you hold it up and down, it wants to fall out. So I load it this way. I use my chest. I hold the spring in, and then I maneuver the snap ring into the hole. It's not great pressure. It's not a big deal. Just put everything in an order. There's a little horseshoe that uh, receiver for the spring. A couple valves. Uh, if you get messed up, look in the book. I mean, this thing's so nice. You can still read the pot number. Getting ready to install my pump bushing that the torque converter rides on. Lots of choices here too. Uh, material they're made out of. This is just a nice American-made Durabond. Uh, I've chosen a driver. Slightly bigger than it. I'm just going to go down and hit it flush. And uh, that's where I'm going to leave it. 
like if you watched any other of my videos i'm going to pack the cavity there with vaseline so i don't knock the spring out when i pound on the seal and i'm going to try to install that in one or two hits almost forgot on the od of the pump bushing i put a couple drops of this uh just for good measure all right i installed my seal flipped it over i lubed my pump gears i also used my excess lube for my seal to uh, lube the area where the seal will ride on the torque converter and the bushing itself. Just can't say lube enough. Uh, got both halves ready to go together. You see these long cavities? Well, they're gonna end up together. That's how I originally orient them. Uh, this remains as it sits. The pump gear is facing up. I'll flip this over, put the bolts in it, and I'll hold that up and tighten it up. Uh, you can't tighten it fully and I'll show you why in just a sec. Before you can tighten the bolts that hold the pump halves together, you need to align both halves. So I've installed my super high-tech hose clamp. It's actually two large hose clamps that I screwed together as a teenager and I've assembled a million transmission since then, or maybe a thousand, I don't know, a lot. If you have an empty uh, transmission case, you could put the pump in upside down and then tighten the bolts. That works too if you don't have access to these super high-tech hose clamps, but you need to hold the halves in alignment and then tighten the bolts. Uh, out of habit, I flip it over and gently down through the seal with my pocket screwdriver. I always make sure the pump gears still turn. Uh, just a good idea, but just don't dislodge the, the spring in the seal. Just be careful. Uh, now I just need two sealing rings and of course my thrust washer. I'm going to select the biggest one I have. That actually goes on first and then the seals. And uh, I'll meet you over at the transmission. We're going to put her in. Back over here at the transmission, I've put my two 516 studs in and my gasket because that will come into play when checking the end play. End play is just how much I can pick up and down on the input shaft. I got a large selection. I bought a couple kits. Uh, my old one. When I say old one, my thrust washer was 72 thousandths. That's a 115. I find the front of a Turbo 400 is usually pretty sloppy. It's not as critical as the back. And uh, I just want to tighten it up some. So I don't have my sealing rings on. I don't have an O-ring on the pump. I have lubed the bushings. I get to say lube again. And I've glued the uh, thrust washer on with a little bit of uh, Vaseline as well. And I'm going to set it in the case, check my end play. All right, I messed around, tried a few different shims. The spec for the front's the same as the back, 7 to 19. Uh, I'm in like the 12 range. I'm going to call it good. Uh, final assembly notes. Each bolt gets a, either a washer or if it has a groove cut in it, it takes an O-ring. Uh, you find them either way. Obviously, you put your O-ring on the pump. I get to say lube again. You lube it up, and you assemble it for real. Uh, I'm going to call that pretty much. You can handle putting the pan on. I'll show you my tail. My tail housing's a mess. I won't show it to you, but it has one broken bolt in it. I've continued to weld nuts on it, and the bolt's getting shorter. Now I'm down below the housing. I think it's soft enough now I could probably drill it. Uh, it's frustrating... How expensive the little things are like if you had to buy that little clamp there a speedo clamp a governor cover a tail house and you'd spend 150 bucks just to try to piece the transmission together uh, so I usually go buy a whole nother cord steal the pieces off and then I'm always chasing pieces so every now and then I just stop and buy everything that's required to assemble one uh, all right you guys have a great day thanks for following along this made the Assembly fun, but it was a lot of work, you know, taking gloves off and on, trying to get my phone all greasy. You know how hot that is. And, uh, hope it helps out. Like and subscribe. Uh, who knows what we'll rebuild next.